My three fundamentals, which of course can be tested and verified by all, apparently have been debunked. But not by providing three scientific demonstrations like I asked for. No, apparently we've had seven provided in a so-called debunk video. I never said it was debunking anything. All I did was give you exactly what you asked for, plus a few bonuses. Now, I wasn't gonna to respond to this video because I hate it when people like Leo try to use me to get eyes on the channel. That's exactly what you do, you Welsh idiot. Shut up, mystery voice. That definitely isn't just me talking off camera. Right, where were we? Oh yeah, so I thought, well, I'm going on holiday in a few days and I will have an entire 11 days of not dealing with idiots. So why not make my last video before my break about the biggest idiot of them all? Friend of the channel, an endless source of content, Level Earth Observer, who apparently has only responded to my video for educational purposes. I swear, I I'm not joking. You'll see. Please subscribe. So let's have a look. Oh, we will have a look, Leo. But before we do, today's video is in partnership with long-term sponsors of the channel, Surfshark VPN. Now, as some of you might know, I'm just about to go on a trip to Spain, and hopefully Surfshark will be amazing. What sort of idiot uses public Wi-Fi without it? Surfshark runs on any device anywhere, and it's packed full of features, such as industry-leading, uncrackable encryption, IP, and DNS leak protection, as well as an internet kill switch if your VPN drops out, plus 24-7 customer support. Now, by using Surfshark VPN, you can stay anonymous and secure online. Now, when I was in Spain, I still wanted to be able to watch my favorite TV shows, so I used Surfshark to watch Netflix content from the UK and the US. And without Surfshark, I wouldn't have been able to do it. All I have to do is switch over my location settings and there you have it. Access to all my favorite programs. Now Surfshark maintains a strict no logs policy and their network of 3,200 servers in over 95 countries runs completely on RAM. So they couldn't log your data even if they wanted to. And by using my code Creaky, you'll benefit from an 83% discount plus three extra months for free. And all you have to do is click the link down below in the description or visit surfshark.deals forward slash creaky. If you don't, well, I don't want to make you feel guilty or anything, but I'll probably starve to death. Anyway, back to the video. Right, you said something about having a look, so let's have a look. I'm sure you'll have lots of sensible things to say as usual. Number one. Watch a ship sail off to sea. Without being in the sky, it's impossible to actually see the curvature of the Earth. But that doesn't mean it's not possible to demonstrate it before you say anything down in the comment. However, you can always see a demonstration of this if you visit a harbour. Or any place with a wide open view of the water. If you're able to... So this fella thinks observations are demonstrations. Uh, no. I don't. I think observations are observations and demonstrations are demonstrations. And are you really in a position to comment on what I think about anything? I mean, you do claim to think that the Earth is flat after all. Watch a ship sail off to sea. Watch its mast and flags as they fade off into the distance. You'll notice that, in fact, it doesn't do that at all. Instead, you will see the mast and flag slowly sink. The ship sailed beyond the point at which you could see it. Just to be sure, bring a pair of binoculars with you so that you can see even farther off into the distance. It's as if you're watching it go over the other side of a hill. Weird, I know. This phenomenon. So this fella thinks boats are actually going, descending below the curvature of a scientifically impossible globe Earth. He cites observations, as he's just done, as demonstrations. I did. Well done for spotting that. I'm afraid that buying a yacht and sailing it over the horizon just to humour a moron like you, Leo, was a little bit outside my budget for a YouTube video. But if I may be so bold as to point out that what I did here was exactly what you wanted. The boat sailing over the horizon is what I imagine any normal person would call a demonstration of the horizon on a globe Earth. And I observed that demonstration and included it in my video. So so, yeah, apart from the fact that it perfectly demonstrates to everyone how much of a clown you are. And maybe that's why you're now claiming it isn't what you asked for. So this fella's citing an observation as a scientific demonstration. So already we can see he doesn't really understand the subject at hand. He thinks an observation is a demonstration. No, it's your observation needs to be backed 
by a demonstration. It is. The boat disappearing from the bottom up is the demonstration. You stupid boy. Now, if I'd used a cartoon of a boat going over the horizon and cited that as a demonstration, then you'd be right. It would be fair enough. But that's an actual boat going over the actual horizon of the globe. My word, it's like trying to explain something to a small child. For it to be scientific which was my whole point in the first place right when I quote my three fundamentals. They can't be refuted and they prove the globe's impossible. But I did refute every single one of them and then some. Just because you don't like them and also don't seem to understand that everything I included in that video is an observation of a demonstration, that's not my fault. Now if you are honestly expecting any of us to go out and waste our time proving something that was proven in the 5th century BC, then you can go f I hate to break it to you and all the other flat earthers out there, but you just aren't that important. I shouldn't even be entertaining this tosh, but I will for educational purposes. <laughs> See? I told you. Oh, that's so adorable. This crayon munching flat earth idiot thinks his videos are educational. Now, if your goal is to educate someone into being a complete muppet that gets laughed at every time he or she opens their mouth, then you're doing a fine job. But if it's anything else, then I'm afraid you're just going to have to accept that you're really stupid. And I don't mean stupid like you did a dumb one time. I mean Officer Doofy stupid. Special Officer Doofy reporting. If this was true, this was down to real curvature and not some optical effect here. And if I was to elevate my position, then I'd be looking down. The higher up I got, the further down beyond the curve I'd be looking. Yes, you would be. Thanks for clearing that up, Leo. That's kind of how it works. The higher you are, the further over the horizon you can see. Now that really can be tested and verified by all. But that's not how reality presents itself to us. Are you being serious? That's exactly what is being presented. Dare I ask how a flat earther thinks reality presents itself? When I raise up, the horizon will raise up with me. Well, I always say a silly question deserves a silly answer, and I walked right into that one, didn't I? Why do flat earthers think this would help their case anyway? The horizon is expected to fall below eye level, as the observer rises above sea level. So this really stupid claim by Leo doesn't actually matter, because the horizon does not rise. The way to test this is to use any device that can accurately measure the level and take it very high. Remember that the Earth is so big big that you're not going to be able to see a noticeable drop in the horizon until you get thousands of feet in altitude. So ideally you'd be in a plane or something over the ocean. Fortunately, aeroplanes have built-in devices to do this. The HUD, which includes two long horizontal lines that show the eye level position. You can clearly see that the horizon doesn't rise to meet this point. It falls below as the plane rises. Look, the standard flat earth response is that these HUDs are fake or don't represent true eye level. Obviously. However, given that these HUDs are standard components on aeroplanes and pilots use them to fly straight all the time, it's pretty obvious to anyone that isn't a flat earth moron that they're very real, regardless of what any of you think. Impossible if the earth was a ball. Wowza. Again, you're wronger than a man named Wrong from Wrongsville. It's only actually possible for exactly the opposite of what you just said. It's because the earth is a ball. Because if the earth was a ball, and that was the horizon line, if I was to raise up, the higher up I got, the further down I'd have to look. Because remember, from this point on, globe believers believe the earth is descending downwards. Nobody says Earth is descending downwards except for flat earthers. I cannot believe that you can't understand that you were explaining exactly why you're wrong. You keep saying that if you go higher, you'd still be able to see the boat. And you're right, but that's because we live on a globe. Now, this is a picture of the Prince of Wales Bridge that connects England and Wales over the River Severn. It's a big old beast and it's visible for miles. So I wonder what would happen if you were to take a picture of it from, say, Lavenock Point in between Barry and Panath. Well, this would happen. All you can see is the tops of the bridge supports, almost as if the roadway and its lower parts are hidden by the curvature of the earth. Now, is that an observation, Leo? Because one of my own subscribers, S2000GT, went to Lavenock Point and took the picture. 
himself and then sent it to me? Or is this just an observation as well? But I'd love to hear you explain where the rest of the Prince of Wales Bridge is hiding. So this fella citing this observation, which of course has no practical reference to back its claims anyway. When I say practical reference, you need a large standing body of water to display convexity upon its surface, to back any observations over water. You are? Now, I'm not being sarcastic here, <laughs> but see all that wavy blue stuff in the lower part of that picture? Well, that's a large standing body of water, Leo. But it's not. That's not how reality presents itself to us. What is it then, if it isn't a large standing body of water? And of course, we've also got to take something else into account. Right, the fact that you and every other flat earther is a complete moron, yeah, we know. And we do take that into account. But in case I'm wrong, what do you think we need to take into account, Leo? You've got lots of things going on, like tides, swells. Yes, we do. And again, you do realise that we can only have tides because we live on a globe, don't you? Now, I could explain you how tides work, you know, gravity and the tidal bulge that's always there and the earth turns within that bulge. But at this point, I feel like it would be a little bit too complicated for Leo to understand. And the last thing I'm going to do is embarrass him. I mean, what with him doing such a good job of that himself? I don't want to make things any worse for him. You're looking through a very dense medium. Through or at? Now, I can't confirm or deny whether you're a medium or not. I'm happy to agree that you're dense, though. I'm not going to blindly confirm that you're a medium. I don't believe in psychic powers either. You've also got to take into account our vision. Like train tracks, they appear to converge. Why are we looking at train tracks? What does that have to do with anything we're talking about? Or are you trying to divert the attention away from the fact that you clearly have no clue what you're talking about? It's fine not to know something, Leo, in the same way as it's fine to admit that you don't know the answer to a question. I do it all the time. If I don't know something, I just say, I don't know. I don't just make it up and then get people like me making videos about how stupid I am. Number two, watch a lunar eclipse. If you're able to catch a glimpse of a lunar eclipse, you can see evidence that Earth is indeed a globe. Here's how it were. So matey boy now has gone from boats going over the horizon to now sky observations. So you just went from the sea to train tracks? None of which are, obs uh, none of which are scientific demonstrations. Both of which are observations that have no demonstrations to back their fundamental claims. Oh my word! If there were no demonstrations, then what would I be observing? You douche canoe! Why are you so obsessed with the scientific method and scientific demonstrations anyway, when all you do in your videos is deny science? The reason I cited these perfectly valid observations is that each and every one of them shows us in one way or another things that are only possible because the earth is a globe and like I've said a million times before just because you don't like them it doesn't mean that they don't do exactly what you asked for every single thing I showed in the video you're responding to shows us that the earth is an oblate spheroid in this instance he thinks a scientifically impossible globe earth is casting a shadow upon the moon. Well, not the scientifically impossible bit, but I can't wait to hear why you think we have eclipses. This is painful stuff. I, I, I'm surprised anyone is still citing this tosh in this day and age. Why are you surprised that in this day and age we still show you things that demonstrate that the Earth is a globe? You asked us to. Maybe you're surprised at how many different ways even I can show people how stupid you are. Or maybe you're surprised that I was able to present you with all these demonstrations, observations, whatever you choose to call them. Do you know what surprises me when it comes to flat earthers? Well, nothing really. How could it possibly be surprising that there are people like this on the internet? The net blindly believe in anything anyone says as long as it validates what they already think. But here we are. Not only are we having to entertain this tosh, I'm only doing it for educational purposes. Stop saying educational, I'm gonna pee my pants. Now, if the eclipse in your model was true and was proof of a globe Earth, we'd never have this when we have a Selenalion eclipse. Right, it isn't a model, first of all, and secondly, whilst the Selenian Selene Selenel Selenel 
And secondly, whilst the Selenalien is a very rare eclipse, they only actually happen about once every 30 years. A Selenalien eclipse is basically just refraction with the sun and the moon being opposite in the sky and slightly above the horizon. And because they are so close to the horizon, they're going to be subject to refraction. And what that means is that the sun and the moon are actually lower than they appear to be. And refraction sort of lifts them up slightly on both sides, which makes them look as if they're opposite each other, which shouldn't be possible. But in reality, the Earth is still in the way and still casts an Earth-shaped shadow onto the moon. It's rarer, but highlights the absurdity of the heliocentric claims that the shadow on the moon during a lunar eclipse is being cast from a scientifically impossible ball. But it's being cast by a globe during a Selenalian eclipse as well, you div. Because a Selenalian eclipse happens when both the sun and the moon are above the earth at the same time. Sorry, when the sun and the moon are above the horizon at the same time, there's no up or down. Sometimes the sun is visible above the horizon. Sometimes the moon is. Sometimes both are. But the reason remains the same for all scenarios. It's because Earth is a globe. Number three, climb a tree. Now try and imagine a vast plain with just one tree smack in the middle of it. If the earth were flat, your vision would extend exactly as far while standing at the base of the tree as it would when you were at the top of the tree. However, the farther you climb, the farther your line of sight will extend to the horizon. What toss this fellow is spewing? What is he talking about? It, the higher you raise yourself on a level plane, the higher you, further you can see. Yeah? Hmm, I'm gonna have to say yes and no. Yes, because if, for example, there were buildings or mountains in the way, if you went up higher, then yeah, you'd be able to see further. Because at that higher elevation, they would no longer be obscuring your line of sight. But I did say, imagine a vast plane. Because you have to imagine it because it isn't real. And on a vast flat plane that we need to imagine, there would be nothing to obscure your view. It would be the same on the globe as well. The only difference is that the globe is reality and flat earth is a load of old shit. Yeah, I agree. And again, all you're doing is pointing out how real the globe is and that the flat earth is just a fantasy. The higher you go, the further down you'd be looking, according to your model. But that's not how reality presents itself to us, is it? It isn't a model, again. And that's exactly how reality presents itself. The higher you go, the more you can see, because the Earth is an oblate spheroid. Fun. Number four, circumnavigation. So if you can do that, Slinky, why don't you? Like Ferdinand Megaland did when he circumnavigated the Earth. And what that means is he left heading west, continued going west, and he ended up back where he started. You mean like this? There's my magnetic north, this is me the traveller, my compass, I'm now circumnavigating around the magnetic north. And as you can see, I've now circumnavigated the magnetic north but on a flat table. Dear oh dear. Dear oh dear indeed. Didn't you hear me say that they left travelling west? and continued west, and then ended up back where they started. All you just did was loop around a magnet on your table. And you say we don't provide anything scientific. <laughs> I'm not convinced you know which direction west is, pal. You went west, then turned north, then east, then south, and then finally back to west. When the globe is circumnavigated, they go in one direction. You went in four different directions. What was it you said earlier about not understanding what was being talked about? Number five, measure shadows across the country. Pick two locations that are some distance apart, at least a couple of hundred miles from each other, but on the same meridian. Grab two sticks of equal length. This guy's so lost. <laughs> I'm lost? You were the one that just claimed to circumnavigate a magnet on your kitchen table by going west, north, east, south, and then back to west? And so uninformed on this subject, he's actually sh sighting shadows and sticks as proof. Oh yeah, not having a Scooby-Doo that you get the same results with a smaller local sun. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. But there's one fatal flaw with what you just said. The sun isn't small or local. This has been terrible. This is probably the worst ever 
so-called globe debunk or globe proof video I think I've ever encountered. Oh, thanks. I'm glad you enjoy my content. It isn't really made for flat earthers, but <laughs> every view counts, so thank you. Anyway, I've got to go and pack for my holly bobs. 11 days of sun and relaxation. And fingers crossed, no flat earthers. Thank you all very much for watching and don't forget that while I am away, you can watch one of the hundreds of other videos I've got on YouTube. If you do feel inclined to support what I do on the channel, all the links you're gonna need are below. And if you fancy a little bit of creaky while I'm away, then follow me over on Twitter. Just because I'm on holiday, it doesn't mean I won't have anything to say. The Matt Powell community video, I'm afraid, is gonna have to wait until I get back on the 22nd. So if you do wanna get involved, I've linked the community post below that explains everything you need to do where you need to send the clips and all that good stuff. Thank you very much indeed to Surfshark for continuing to support the channel. It is very much appreciated. Don't forget, that's linked right at the top of the description as well. So uh, until next time, Viva España. Thank you all. I've got to go now. Love you, bye. All right, all right. What's this next? But before you do, make sure you subscribe. By order of the creaky blinder.